All right, ladies and gentlemen, boy tarde. Today is May 12th. I'm getting surgery. Yeah, I'm getting a procedure called Vivera. So I'm going to take you guys through the process. And the reason why I'm doing that, ever since I was born, uh, I remember my mom telling me that when I was born, I was placed in the incubator for months because I couldn't really breathe. I've always had breathing issues through my nostril. Uh, I had surgery when I was 15 to remove extra tissue that I had. And yeah, I mean, I, I fought with the doctors to do that because I was like, I literally can't breathe from both nostrils. And it was something really hard for me. I would snore very loudly. Uh, so I had like severely obstructive sleep apnea. And for those of you that know what sleep apnea is or that don't know what sleep apnea is, is basically if you have it, you're at risk. Like you stop breathing while you're asleep. And I, I don't know how many times is the normal amount of times that you can stop breathing while you're asleep for you to be like, okay. But I was like not breathing like 40 times a minute. So I would stop breathing for 40 times in one minute. So it was really bad. After the surgery, uh, I did like start breathing better from this nostril, well, actually from both nostrils. Unfortunately, because of the surgery, um, after a couple of years, like the tissue that was healing scarred. So in trying to find different solutions, I came across uh, an ENT doc doctor and he recommended that I do this treatment called Vivera, which is basically laser because this nostril I can breathe, but this nostril I only get about 20% uh, of the air coming in. So that's still still bad. So I don't know what you full breathers feel, right? So he opted that I do this treatment. Uh, there was two different types of treatments and my insurance, mm, they got me a little mad because uh, one of the treatments was surgical. Oh, both of them are considered surgery. The only difference was one of them is under the knife and then the other one is laser. Laser was the one he suggested, but unfortunately my insurance won't cover it. So yes, it's gonna be out of pocket. Uh, I w don't mind telling you the cost because I feel like with health, it doesn't matter the cost, right? We want longevity. So my insurance basically said that the new procedure, the laser procedure was too new, even though other insurance companies have already taken it. So they weren't going to cover it. They would though approve the laser procedure. I mean the surgical procedure, which is under the knife. Under the knife, I'd still have to pay the doctor fees, the hospital fees, the anesthesia fees. Uh, and it was a total of like $3,000 still with insurance. And I was like, uh, and the recovery time is seven to 10 days. Like I literally have to be in bed. And for those of you who know me, I love to walk. I love to work out. So that was like, what the hell? I'm not going to do that unless, and, and, and I love work at the end of the day. I love going to work. Uh, the laser procedure is a one-day recovery. I can go back to the gym the very next day, even though I'm still going to take it easy. And it was 3000 or it is 3700 So I was like, I'm going to pay a little extra. I'm going to pay a little extra because why not? It's $700 more. Yes, it's a lot. But I'd rather be bedridden for half a day or a day than a whole 7 to 10 business days. So, yeah. And the procedure is about to be 30 minutes. So I wanted to do this vlog, which I haven't done a vlog in such a very long time, to kind of take you through the process of Vivera because in researching it, I've only found doctors talking about it and not necessarily patients actually posting videos on YouTube and saying like, hey, this is how the procedure is going. This is what we're gonna do. So hopefully the doctors let me film in, um, yeah, in whatever the room because it's under local anesthesia so it's not uh, they're not gonna put me to sleep I'm gonna be wide awake uh, yeah so I know you guys can't hear but I'm gonna try to here let me turn off the AC because I'm already here I'm about to get out of my car but just so you guys can see the difference between my breathing so if I do this so this one all the way this one gets stuck a little bit but if I open it a little 
the obstruction stops. So hopefully after the surgery, um, the obstruction will stop. And since it's a surgery that I won't be on, like I'll be on local anesthesia, I don't need a driver. So I can drive myself back. Ay, wey, ya se quitó la luz. All right, let me take you guys in there. Okay, so this is a setup. That is the Viver. I said Vivera earlier, but it's Vivera. So they said the procedure's pretty fast. What takes is, I mean, what takes a long time is the numbing. So I guess they're gonna numb me two, two to three times. So with like a spray and whatnot, then wait 20 minutes, then spray again, wait 20 minutes, and then injection. Yeah. What is this? Are you videoing this? Yes, I'm gonna record. Okay, so they put these little cotton balls in there to numb the nose. I have to wait 10 minutes and then um, they're gonna do another round and then they're going to inject me. Y el doctor me está diciendo that the injection, like I told him I, I had an injection in my finger and it hurt like hell. He said, yes, they do hurt like hell, but the nose, the nose hurts even more. I'm dreading that. <sighs> Send help. So he said that these little things, whatever, they're enlarged. So he's going to reduce them with like laser activity. Then he said, I don't have a big deviated septum, but there's like, is some obstruction. So they're going to correct that. Uh, when I was 15, I, like I was mentioning earlier, I did have, oh look, that's the enlarged. I did have uh, no surgery prior. So I have some scar tissue that they're gonna bring down. And I think that's about it. So. Some slow, deep breaths. On your head, okay? You okay? Oh, that was, that was tough. I'm crying. Yeah. So this is the device uh -huh. and it delivers the energy through the tip there. And that's radio frequency energy. And that's the that's what's going to go into your tissues. Oh, okay. The radio frequency energy. Awesome. Okay, let's do this. Right. Yeah. What procedure am I going to get done? Like when you're going to. Yeah. So you're you're going to have the Vivair procedure. Uh huh. That is a procedure that's for the nose uh -huh. to help you breathe better. Uh huh. And in your specific case, we are going to repair what's called nasal valve collapse. Uh huh. And that's what's happening internally here because of lack of support uh -huh. of the cartilages of your nose. Uh -huh. And sometimes that's something you're born with. Sometimes it happens after injuries or surgery. I think I was born with it because... I think so. From birth, I've been having... Yeah. Problems. Yeah. And we're going to start the procedure. You're going to hear some a series of beeps. Okay? Which is burning. The radio frequency energy is... It does heat up the tissue locally, but in this specific situation, it heats up the cartilage to the point where it produces extra connective tissue for extra support. So the first set of beeps is the actual delivery of the radio frequency, and the second set of beeps is the cooling down process. Mm. Because you can't just deliver energy without cooling this tissue down. Otherwise, there'll be too much tissue damage. I can breathe. Good. Are you... F well, th that's just temporary for me pushing it open. Oh. <laughs> so, but the, the effects take a few weeks to fully happen. But I'm holding everything open now, just by pushing it. But. So, we're mm. doing the treatment. You're doing great so far. Are you feeling anything sharp or no. painful? Good. Nothing. So that means the numbing medicine is doing its job. I feel tickly. Uh, that's... Okay, so typically, who would you recommend get this procedure and how would they know that they need this? Yeah, so anyone with, who's having trouble breathing through their nose needs to come in for an examination. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to determine if they were a candidate for this type of procedure. Mm -hmm. You cannot just, you know, say to yourself, oh, I'm going to have this procedure done. You have to be 
an appropriate candidate, mm -hmm. and it has to do with it has to do with your uh, your anatomy mm -hmm. and what's going on inside your nose, mm -hmm. uh, and of course your medical history if you've had previous surgeries or injuries, and so all of those things need to be determined by uh, ear, nose, and throat physician like mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. So, but if you're having trouble breathing through your nose or if you're snoring, mm -hmm. then you come in to get evaluated. Yeah. And this is immediately active. I know. The previous okay, y'all. So this is a couple hours after. I have a bunch of Kleenexes because mocos are pouring and I'm congested AF. So, I mean, you don't, I don't feel sick or anything. I'm just congested. And I'm like, how am I going to sleep today? Okay, it's been about four months since I got my procedure done here um, to open my airway for my nostrils. We'll see what the doctor says and then I'll give you guys my opinion afterwards. Uh, my breathing? Yes. How I feel you? like this nostril has gotten yes. better. Okay. This one, which I think was the more obstructed one, still feels obstructed. Okay. And it's interesting because once I had the procedure done, yes, I felt like both nostrils were equally open, and, right? You know, and then it felt like it. It slowly started it slowly to close. Okay. okay, yeah. So it's possible that it could be actually physically starting to close. Look up at the ceiling for me. And remember, I told you most people require only one treatment, mm -hmm. but sometimes you need more than one. Yeah. And so, one of the things I want to check through your nose. Yeah. Much from okay. here, unless we do a second treatment, basically, and this time focusing more, uh, more energy delivery to the right nostril to get more support. Uh -huh. um, the other alternative is to do a surgical procedure to try to give more support, but that would require going to the operating room mm -hmm. under anesthesia and all of that, what we talked about, yeah. the, the reconstructive type of procedure where we would have to borrow some cartilage from your back of your ear here wow. to reconstruct that cartilage that um, that's weak. Okay. So those, uh, are your, those are basically your choices, is to try to do another radio frequency treatment here in the office under mm -hmm. local uh, versus trying... Which is a 12, 10 to 12 day recovery period. Correct. Yeah. Okay. No sé qué hacer. I don't know what to do. Uh, to have surgery, like actual surgery, or to do the first procedure all over again. Um, they basically said that my window op of opportunity in order to be better, feel, get the best results, and not feel like I'm starting all over again uh is six months after my first procedure my first procedure was done in may it is currently september so that means i have until november to decide on which route i want to go do i want to get the surgery where they get some of the cartilage from the back of my ear and they put it right here so it opens my airways up or try the first procedure again Y sí me agüito, güey. Sí me agüito un poco porque the first surgery was... It's, it's expensive. No me lo quiso cobrir, cobrar... I can't even talk. No me lo quiso cubrir el seguro. The insurance didn't want to pay for it. So that was out of pocket. And that was 3700 Pero I was like, no importa. No importa el costo. Yo lo que quiero es poder respirar normal. Respirar como el resto de la gente. Is that just too much to ask? Um, and it was a new procedure. I understood the risk y todo eso. Versus getting surgery from the start. Que a lo mejor me estoy arrepintiendo un poquito. Pero I didn't want to... I didn't want to be bedridden for 12 days. Si me entiendes, sin hacer ejercicio. La gente que me conoce. I'm a very antsy person. I need to be moving. So that, that was just out of the question. Versus something that like, I just needed a couple hours of rest. And then I could go back to my normal life. Lo único que sí sé es que si estás viendo este video y no tienes un HSA, which is a health savings account, get one. 
ya, bueno, literalmente no sabes cuándo vas a tener que gastar en cosas médicas o si el seguro no te va a cubrir ciertas cosas si es que te tienen que operar y mínimo un health savings account if you put money in the amount of money it's like it, it's like a retirement account i don't want to call it a retirement account but it's a retirement for your health uh it'll grow because you invested into the stock market and then two most 401ks if you pull money out you're going to get taxed by the state and by not being of age Versus an HSA, uh, which is a health savings account. O sea, tú puedes sacar el dinero as long as it's for a health related thing. Pero bueno, ya basta del depre, que yo no soy una persona depre y todo el rollo. Este, más bien echarle ganas, chingadazos que tengo de aquí hasta diciembre para decidir qué pedo con esto. Porque al final de cuentas es para mi bien, para mi salud, para mi futuro. Y yo quiero estar en este planeta lo más que pueda. Entonces, a ver qué pedo. Um, because for those of you who don't know, if you stop breathing at night, you're at risk of, you know, having a stroke at night. And then you could die. So I don't want that. Right? Um, pero sí. Hasta el próximo video con más updates. Si algunos tienen any type of info, that would be great for me. Háganmelo saber, dejen sus comentarios, suscríbanse que siento que esto va para largo.